Hey everyone, and welcome back to Out of Here Baseball. In this video, we'll be filling out our lineup card for the players with the most hits in the 1980s. Baseball in the 80s saw a decline in home runs, a substantial rise in stolen bases, and an abundance of astroturf. Relief pitchers, and in particular closing pitchers, rose to prominence, and the Yankees went the whole decade without winning the World Series. Indeed, times were different, but the players of the era were just as talented as ever. We will be filling out a lineup for the players who had the most hits between the 1980 and 1989 seasons. When creating this lineup, players were first listed in order of most hits to least hits during the decade. They were then listed at a specific position based off of what position they played the most games at in the 80s. As an example, Andre Dawson was considered as a right fielder despite playing a few seasons in center, and Robin Yount was considered a shortstop despite playing in the outfield later on in his career. Another important note is that a player's hit total is irrespective of position. Using Yount as an example again, the hits he collected as an outfielder and designated hitter will still count towards his total even though he is listed as a shortstop for this video. Now that the rules have been set, let's start filling out our lineup card for the players with the most hits in the 80s. At catcher, we have Hall of Famer Gary Carter. Carter made 9 straight All-Star teams from 1980 to 1988 and won 5 Silver Sluggers in the process. He split his time in the 80s between the Montreal Expos and New York Mets, with whom he won the 1986 World Series. Carter was a steady offensive force throughout the decade, typically hitting 20 plus homers and racking up well over 100 hits in a season. He didn't take many days off either, which helped him to reach the top spot for hits among catchers ahead of the likes of Carlton Fisk and Lance Parrish. Our first baseman is Eddie Murray. Murray is one of the greatest players to never win an MVP award, but he finished in the top five on five separate occasions in the 80s alone. During the decade, he played all but the 1989 season with the Baltimore Orioles and was a fair bet to hit 30 homers and drive in 100 runs each season. While he never led the league in hits, Murray would finish with over 100 hits in 20 of his 21 big league seasons and is one of six players to total over 3,000 career hits and 500 home runs. Another interesting note is that Murray holds the major league record for sacrifice flies with 128. Moving over to second base, we have Tigers great Lou Whitaker. Whitaker spent his entire 19 year career with the Detroit Tigers and had his best years during the 1980s. He would make five all-star teams and win four silver sluggers in the decade and win the 1984 World Series. His best hitting season would come in 1983 when he collected 206 hits, the only time he would top the 200 mark in his career. Whitaker cannot be mentioned without bringing up shortstop Alan Trammell, who played alongside Whitaker from 1977 to 1995. Trammell was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2018, and despite having very similar statistics, Whitaker is still on the outside looking in. Our third baseman for this lineup is Wade Boggs. Boggs didn't make his debut until 1982, but was still able to take top spot among third basemen over the likes of fellow Hall of Famers George Brett and Paul Molitor. He did so thanks to seven straight 200 hit seasons from 1983 to 1989, topping out at 240 hits during the 1985 season. He led the American League in batting average five times and on base percentage six times in the 80s, and was recognized as an all-star five times. Boggs would finish his career as a member of the 3000 hit club, playing his last season in 1999. At shortstop is the player with the most hits in the 80s, Robin Yount. I said during the intro that Yount spent time playing the outfield, but he appeared in 16 more games at shortstop than he did in center, which is why you see him here instead of Alan Trammell or Cal Ripken Jr. Yount is a member of the 3000 Hit Club, recording at least 175 in 7 different seasons. He made his major league debut at age 18 and would spend his entire 20 year career in Milwaukee. During the 80s he won 2 MVP awards, with one of them coming in 1982, the only year the Brewers ever made it to the World Series. In left field is stolen base king Ricky Henderson. In addition to stealing the most bases in MLB history, Henderson holds the record for most runs scored in a career and is the only player with over 3,000 hits and 2,000 walks. While he led the league in hits once during the 80s, Henderson never finished with more than 180 hits in a season. His large hit total can be attributed to the large number of opportunities he had since he batted leadoff for such a long time. Still, Ricky Henderson was a rare offensive talent, the likes of which we may never see again. In center field, we have another speedster in Willie Wilson. Wilson spent all of the 80s with the Kansas City Royals and made two all-star teams while winning two silver sluggers. His 230 hits in 1980 were the most in the majors, as were his 15 triples, 
a category he led the majors in four times. Like Henderson, Wilson built his game around speed and would bat at the top of the order, which helped him accumulate a large hit total. He would record at least 150 hits eight times during the 80s and would win the 1985 World Series over the in-state rival Cardinals. Our right fielder is 2019 Hall of Fame inductee Harold Baines. Baines would make his debut in 1980 and play almost the entire decade with the Chicago White Sox. While he was primarily used as a designated hitter after 1986, he appeared in more games at right field during the decade. He made four all-star teams and won a silver slugger during the 80s, while providing insistent offensive production. Baines' highest hit total came in 1985, when he had 198 to go along with a top 10 MVP finish. Our designated hitter is Don Baylor. Baylor was the 1979 AL MVP for the Angels, and it was the only time he would make an all-star team. After that season, he would primarily be used as a designated hitter and would win three silver sluggers for his offensive production. You may have noticed that his hit total was lower than that of the other positions in this lineup, but that's because not many players played a majority of their games at DH during the decade. Baylor was in the latter stages of his career during the 80s and would retire in 1988. Lastly is our pitcher Fernando Valenzuela. Mexican legend Fernando Valenzuela had one of the best starts to his major league career. In 1981, he won Rookie of the Year and the Cy Young Award and would go on to make six straight All-Star teams. He finished in the top five for Cy Young voting three other times and at the plate won two Silver Sluggers. During the 80s, he hit seven homers and drove in 61 runs and even hit a triple in his rookie season. Sadly, Valenzuela would begin to lose his dominance in the late 80s and by the time the 90s rolled around, he was a shell of his former self. So that concludes our lineup for the players with the most hits in the 80s. If you have a suggestion for a future lineup, be sure to leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to Out of Here Baseball for more content. Thanks for watching.